to enter GIMP, I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to choose open with the GNU manipulation program and GIMP will open up. As you can see, unlike a lot of programs, GIMP is not a single window, it turns out to be three different windows, okay? And you can selectively display or hide each of them. Um, but it's best to have them all available. This one on the left hand side is the toolbox. So this is the one where you've got all your different tools for manipulating the image. Okay, such as selection, as uh, color, fill, um, healing brush, etc. All these good things that will be very familiar to people um, who've used Photoshop before. Uh, in the center pane we have the representation of the actual image itself. And over here in the right pane here is the layers palette. So um, for those of you not familiar with uh, layers, you can create multiple layers in your uh, photo while you're working on it. And then you can choose to flatten it back into a single layer at the end once you've finished manipulating it. Okay, I don't intend to go through every possible facility that GIMP has because GIMP has an awful lot. I would say in power it's very comparable to Adobe Photoshop Elements. Don't expect it to be as powerful as a, as a full Photoshop CS5 or whatever version they're up to these days, but it's good enough for any amateur use. And you can pretty much find all the useful stuff that Photoshop Elements has in here as there's very few things that are missing. For the normal photographer, um, there are probably only a few things that, that you want to do to your photo. Some of the most basic things I normally do are, first of all, to adjust the levels when you come in here. So if you click on, I've got a single layer here, just called the background, so I'm going to go on Colors, Levels. You can see here is a histogram representation of the contrast throughout the range of this photo. As you can see over here we've got a big peak of exposure and then a second peak here and then it kind of levels off. Normally to lift a photo like this you really want this level to come in just at the start of the peak. And then here we've got a little bit of a peak at the end so I'm not quite sure how this is going to look but normally we take the highlights slider and just pull it in to the end of the last major peak here which is coming down here and then you can adjust the mid-tones here to exactly how you want it. That's a little bit too dark, I think, there. Put it back a bit. There you go. That just lifts a bit of the tones, gets rid of the real dark um, shadows here, maybe the real highlights here. You probably may be clipping off a little bit of the detail in these clouds here. Let's see if we can pull any back. Yeah, there's a little bit of detail coming back, you see there. Uh, it kind of depends whether you actually want to preserve that, or whether you just want to lift the center part of the image. Incidentally, if you do want to leave that there, you can always just operate on the mid-tones here if you want to try and get a little bit more color, uh, light back into that uh, this mountain scenery here. Okay, so actually I think I'm quite happy with that. So once everything looks okay, you just click on, on uh, OK. Next thing I want to do here really is to, probably doesn't need it too much in this photo, but often you'll find in uh, some of your photos if you haven't got the focus quite right, may look a little bit soft, maybe a little bit of softness, certainly coming over here, I think maybe cloud anyway, so possibly not much we can do with it. But if we go to filters, enhance, unsharp mask, so this works in a very similar way to Photoshop elements. So. This tool actually works on a preview window and not on the main window, so you won't see any difference in the main window until you press OK. So you can see here the effect that it's having on this scenery here. It's trying, tending to put a little bit more contrast in here to try and bring it out. And you can play with this radius. That gives it a very stark amount of uh, sharpness. There you go, that's a bit better, I think, in there. So as you scroll it, you can see it's kind of soft, and then as the area comes in, it starts to get a little bit sharper. That's probably quite a lot of sharpening. If you, you're going to play with the sharpness, you want to keep it really low, or it becomes noticeable pretty quickly. So I'm going to keep that amount down. And again, to fine-tune here, slider's not the greatest thing to get an accurate placement of uh, sharpness. You can actually just use these up and down just to tweak it one way or the other. 
then I'm going to tweak it down a little bit. Down, 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 down. Okay. That's not too bad. I think I'm going to take it down to um, 0.5 actually. I can just over type in this box here. Now I'm just going to tab out of it. Okay, that's not too bad. That's just a little bit of sharpening. And then when I'm happy with the sharpness, what I can do is I can just click OK. And you can see here it's working away. Uh, what it happens is it, it creates a separate layer here underneath it which it's using to sharp against and then it'll combine the two and there you go it's sharped it a little bit so it just brings it a little bit crisper and normally for most photos that's probably all you're going to do to them and uh, once you're happy with them you can just save it out I normally save it out as a different file manipulated ones so you can keep the original